And let's see what happened when the Holy Ghost came. The thing, you know, we've been talking about praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. Well, I'm supposed to dismiss the children. No, we're not going to be long. I need you to you know, stay here for with me. Acts chapter 2. Pick it up in verse 1. You see, if we get in the right position at the right place, we'll see what God wants us to see. And not necessarily what looks, what we see in the natural. Because what you're seeing in natural may not be what you're supposed to be looking at. How you feel in the natural, the pain that's in your body, that's not what you're supposed to be meditating on. The confusion in the relationship, that's not what you're supposed to be meditating on. I've got to meditate on God's word. Acts chapter 2. Oh, Lord Jesus, let's look at this. It says that, verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all, everybody say all. all. They were all with one accord in one place. That's why it's so important when we begin, to, when we come into the house of God, when we begin to just pray and just seek the face of God and just forget about what we're going through and start seeking the face of God for others. They were all in one place in one accord. One accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were what? All filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem devout men out of every nation under heaven. They had come for a religious holiday, tradition. Verse 6 says, and now when it was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Now they were Galileans, but they were speaking. Every man heard them speak in his own language. Just like you saw your picture in God's wallet. This is what happened here. They were all speaking, but the, 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 uh, the, the, the Phoenicians or whoever else was there, uh, uh, they, they heard him speak Phoenician. Let's, let's see who I was there. I think I can find that. What? Verse 9? Yeah. Corinthians, the Medes, uh, Elamites, the dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea. Judea. Let's say if, they, if I was from Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, I heard them speak Mesopotamian. All of them were Judeans. All of them were, were, were Galileans, but I heard them speak in my own language. Everybody heard them speak in their own language. That's why when we pray in the Holy Ghost, God understands. That's why he can understand the Japanese, the Chinese, the Mexican, and me. Because he's not limited by language. He's limited by what? Heart. See, as I began to pray in the Holy Ghost, out of my heart, out of the spirit of man, comes my desire. And as I began to just pray in the Holy Ghost, say, Lord, I need help. And sometimes the word says we don't know what to pray for as we all do it. But it said the Holy Ghost will make intercession for us. That's why when we begin to pray in the spirit, the thing that you think you might need, the Holy Ghost knows exactly what you need. The thing you, the way you think it might need to come to pass, the Holy Ghost knows exactly how it needs to come to pass. And so when you go to God, you say, Lord, not my will. That's what Jesus said. And you got to do the same thing. Lord, not my will, but your will. Your will. What is your will for my life? And then you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You begin to charge yourself up. You begin to cry out to God. And you say, Lord, I thank you right now for the power of the Holy Spirit. So here, uh, as of a, the, the Holy Ghost came as of a sound of a rushing mighty wind, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 7 said, they were amazed and marvelled, saying unto one another, Behold, are not all these Galileans, are all these which speak Galileans, and how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Say so these are all Galileans, but we're hearing them in our own tongue. That's where the miracle was. The miracle was not in the Holy Ghost. The miracle was not that the fact that they were speaking in tongues. The miracle was how they heard, how the people heard them. You see, so the miracle is not that you're speaking in tongues. The miracle is the result of your tongues. And you see, you've got to stand uh, fast and not be moved by, well, I've been praying in tongues for two weeks and nothing's happening. Yeah, something is happening. 
in the realm of the spirit, God is doing some supernatural things. But you can't quit. You can't give up. A lot of times, you know, we can be on the brink of our miracle, on the brink of our breakthrough. But because this flesh gets tired and because, you know, somebody's whispering in your ear saying, you've been doing it this way for a long time and nothing's happening. Yes, something is happening. You just cannot quit. You cannot give up. You cannot get weary. God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for your life. And if we decide that we're going to follow the plan of God, follow the purpose of God, we'll begin to see some supernatural things in our midst. Amen? I want to I read something to you. Uh, I got this out of a Miles Monroe book uh, on purpose. Uh, every one of us have potential. And if we are not careful, we'll miss it. God has something for me to do. He has something for you to do. What he has for you to do, it maybe probably will be completely different from what he has for me to do. You cannot judge what he has you to do, for you to do. You can't compare what he has for me or your neighbor to do. Look at this. He says potential. This is, what, this is how he defines potential. Potential is reserved power. It's untapped strength. Unused success. Hidden talent. It says all you can all you can be but have not become yet. Everything you can be but you haven't become, everybody say yet. What you can accomplish, but have you not yet, you have not yet accomplished. That's your potential. And what happens is God has placed potential on the inside of each and every one of us. What's your potential? How are you gonna find out? How is it going to how are you gonna accomplish what you haven't accomplished yet? You have to do that by the Holy Ghost. And you have to get along with God, begin to pray. If you don't pray in the spirit, just get along with God and just talk to God. The reason we talk about praying in the spirit, because a lot of times when you begin to pray in the spirit, your mind, you shut your mind down. You have all kinds of thoughts that begin to go through your mind. But you see, you're not praying out of your mind. You're praying out of what? Your spirit. And see, that's why the enemy fights this so hard. Because he doesn't understand what you're saying. Your flesh doesn't understand what you're saying. And if you're operating in the flesh, you're quick praying in the spirit. I want every eye closed, and I want you to lift your hand. If you don't pray in the Holy Spirit, if you don't pray in the Holy Spirit, lift your hand. If you do not pray in the Holy Spirit, lift your hands. If you do not pray in the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to embarrass you. Everybody, every eye closed, so nobody knows it but you and me and the Holy Ghost. If you do not pray in the Holy Spirit, raise your hand. All right. Open your eyes up. So, According to that, then everybody praying in the Holy Spirit. So what that means is, uh, as we begin to spend more time praying in the Holy Ghost, now this is the way we do. We go to God and say, God, I don't understand what I'm saying. My mind doesn't understand what I'm saying. And I may not even sense, uh, you know, that, that it's making a difference. But because of the word, I'm going to obey the word. And I'm going to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, Lord, teach me. How to be obedient to you. You see, praying in the Holy Ghost will begin to get you some things in the natural even that you wouldn't know how to get normally. Because what you're doing, you're listening to the voice of God as you pray in the Holy Ghost. You're listening to the voice of God and he's telling you exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Now we'll forget. Now we shared this uh, uh, before. Uh, there, were, there were five of us, brothers and sisters, and uh, my mother sold a seed for all of us to get saved. So she sold a seed. And during that, within a year, all five of us got saved and all of our spouses. Now, somebody would have said, well, that would have happened anyway. I beg to differ. You see, we have to make a demand on God's anointing. We have to make a demand on the presence of God. God wants to show up in my life. God wants to show up in my life. But I have to give him something to work with. Well, I don't have to give him something to work with. He wants to see where my heart is. So when my mom, you know, and I, and I don't know all the details. I'm, I'm, I think it was Oral Roberts. But when she decided that she was going to sow a seed, and I'm sure it was a significant seed because she remembered sowing it. If you sow a seed and you don't remember what you sowed, it probably wasn't significant. But you sow it for a purpose. 
and you sow that seed and you depend on God to do some supernatural thing, well, then he'll show up every time. And uh, so what happened is, you know, and, and I believe that God is, is, is leading us right now to begin to just seek his face because God want to do some things in my life. He want to do some things in your life. You want him to do some things in your life. Seek his face. Say, God, what would you have me to do? Do you want me to sow a seed? What, what seed do you want me to sow? How much do you want me to sow? Because everything I have, I'm giving it to you. It belongs to you. Uh, Minister David said this morning, you don't want to take God's stuff. You don't want to take what belongs to him. No, we want to seek his face. We want to cry out to him. Because we have a purpose. God has a purpose for me. God has a purpose for you. And all I need to do is find out what? What his purpose is. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. One more, let's read one more scripture. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The season that we're in, God is about to break something loose. And you know what? We can't get any glory for it. We can't get any credit for it. It's, we're going to know that this is nothing but God. Because see, some things we've been trying for years. We've been praying for years and months. But all of a sudden now, when the breakthrough comes, we're going to say, oh, God, thank you. This is nothing but the hand of God. This is all you. Divine favor will be going to rest upon you. God will do some supernatural things in your life. And you'll begin to see him move in a mighty way. T turn to Romans. Romans chapter 8. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to pick up at verse 26. Now, in Acts 2, what we just read, and uh, when they said, we just, we hear them speak in our language. That was a miracle. When you began to pray in the Holy Ghost, and God begin, and you and you're praying out of your heart. God begins to hear. The Bible says the Holy Ghost is praying that prayer, the perfect prayer. He that searches the heart knoweth what the mind of the spirit, and he does intercession for us. So as he begins to do intercession, as the Holy Spirit begins to do intercession according to how we pray, according to the power that works in us. If I don't work the power, there's nothing to work, is it? See, that's why we have to work the power of the Holy Spirit that's in us. That's why I just, me personally, that's why I just encourage you to get, become filled with the Holy Spirit and just be praying in other tongues. Just pray in a prayer language. Pray in a language that you don't understand with your mind and all of a sudden, God will show up. And you see, what happens is, when we begin to pray in the Holy Spirit, we shut our mind down because all that's coming out now is words that we don't understand. And when we start praying and speaking the words we don't understand, God shows up. Because what? Our mind has been shut down. And we'll come into God. Romans 8, 26. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we, know, uh, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh what? Intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he what? He maketh intercession for the saints according to what? The will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Let's read 28 again. It says what? And we know that all things, everybody say all things. All things work together for good to them that what? Love God. So if you love God, no matter, according to that scripture, it says what you're going through is working together for God's good. What you're saying, well, this can't be working together. What I'm going through right now can't be working together. Yes, it can and it will. It all depends on how we receive it. I don't care what you're going through. If we love God, according to this scripture, and you say, if you love God, that means you're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. If you love God, that means you're going to spend some time with him. If you love God, that means you're going to seek his advice. So as you begin to do all these things and you love God praying, it says what you're going through, you can take that and you can turn it around on the devil. If it, it may be meant for adversity for you, but you can take it and turn it around and say, Lord, I thank you that I'm going to go through this just on this scripture. You said because this is going to work together for my good. I'm going to come out of this. I'm going to come out in victory. I'm going to come out in power. I'm going to come out in the anointing. 
And God's going to do some supernatural things in my life as I begin to take this and begin to fulfill my purpose. See, you have a purpose. God wants to fulfill your, your purpose. And as he begins to work in you, as you begin to pray in the spirit, as you begin to pray in, in your, uh, with your understanding, God is beginning to work some things in your life. And he'll begin to show you exactly what you need to do. He'll begin to show you exactly the decisions you need to make, when you need to make them, and how you need to make them. Then you say, now, Lord, once you make the decision, you say, Lord, I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you for your direction. You see, and, and from that point on, you're no longer moved by how you feel. You're no longer moved by, you know, uh, uh, this body. Because you have based your decision on God's word. You know, if, you're, if, if you've come in, if uh, sickness has attacked your body, and you say, Lord, I thank you, I'm coming. You've got scripture now. You've prayed. God has shown you a scripture that you can hang your hat on. You get the scripture say, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. If that's the scripture you're hanging your hat on, then you begin to speak that 24-7. Every time the pain hits your body, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And you're hanging your hat on that. And all of a sudden now, your body is telling you what? That you're not healed. Your body is telling you you got pain in it. But the worry says what? You're healed. So, what, so, so what's going to determine? So you got, you got two things happening. The word said you heal. You're quoting that you heal. Your body says you're sick. You got pain. Your body says you, you go, you know, things are happening. So you got a choice to make. Are you healed or are you not healed? Are you going to go with what the Bible says, what the word says, what the scripture says, or would you want to go with what the body says? See, now, and now that seems simple. But if you're not careful, all of us, We'll begin to allow this body to speak so loud until we begin to say what this body is saying rather than say what the word says. But as long as I say what the word says, that's how I walk in victory. I have to find out what God says about it. Once I open scripture up and if I know I'm supposed to be healed, then that's what I have to, that's what I have to come out of my mouth irregardless of how I feel in my body. If I know God wants me to be prosperous and, and be in health even as my soul prospers, then that's what has to come out of my mouth. I don't care what my finances look like. Then I begin to, you know, if God's telling me that we know I'm supposed to tithe, and if he's telling me to give an offering, then I've got to obey that. Then I begin to obey scripture, and then I begin to quote scripture. You see, the scriptures all, this is what I live by. This is my roadmap for success. And this is all I know. I can't allow my body to dictate to me what I say, when I say it, or how I say it. If I do, then I'm going to be controlled by this body. And, and this body going to tell me uh, how I want to feel. This body even tell me when I want to die. Yeah. Because I'm, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead me down a path of destruction. This word will lead me to, uh, down a path of life, and power, and maturity. So I got a choice to make. If I want to reach my potential, if I want to reach my purpose, I've got to listen to the word of God. And that's, got to, that's all got to come out of my mouth. I can't allow my flesh. I can't allow you. I can't allow nothing and nobody else to stop me from speaking God's word. Because that's, that's all I know. That's what's going to give me my victory. That's what's going to make me overcoming on my job. That's what's going to make me an overcome in my family. That's what's going to make me an overcomer wherever I go. It's his word. That's going to get, that's going to drive sickness out of my body. That's going to be me and my relationships. Oh, that's going to do some mighty things. Now, when you start, notice when you start quoting this thing, this body going to act up. Now, it may act up. You still got a choice. You got a choice. And your choice is what? This word. I'm going to speak this word. I'm going to allow this word to be my necessary food. I'm going to allow this word to come out of my mouth, and I'm going to see the power of God manifest like never before. God's word is forever self. And that's what, that's what has to come out of our mouth. If we try to mix this stuff up, I think I shared this with you last time, you know, cold water is good when you're hot and thirsty, isn't it? Oil is good when you want to put it in your car. But when you mix them, they're good for nothing. You, you can't drink it, and you can't put it in your car. Well, a lot of times, that's exactly what we're doing. We're trying to mix too much of God's word with what, we, what people say, 
with the way our flesh feels, and nothing's happening. We, we, you know, we take the word, and we won't go to the doctor because we're confessing the word, but then we're still mixing it with what our body is saying, so we won't go to the doctor. So we're going to, you know, you, you, you're not getting any success anywhere. Don't, you know, I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. Please go to the doctor. But what I'm saying, and you know, if you need to go to the doctor, there's nothing wrong with doctor. I believe God gave us doctors. But what we'll do is we'll hold this word up and we'll start confessing the word. And we don't, you know, we, it's not out of our spirit. And so what ends up, we end up mixing the word with the flesh and our pain. And we don't know how to stand. And we won't go to the doctor, so we end up dying. It would be best to just, you know, you know, remember the woman with the issue of blood? The Bible said what? She had spent all she had on the doctor. So she had gone all, gone to the doctor, spent all she had. She had gone to her wit's end with the doctors. Well, when you go as far as the doctor can take you, and they can't do anymore, then you, now you're over here with the worry. So there ain't no going back, because they've already told you, hey, we're done. They've already told you that we're done. So now it's easier, and even in the natural, for us to say, well, Lord, I'm going to stand on your word. That's what that woman with the issue of blood did. She spent all she had first on the doctors. But then she said, oh, she heard, everybody said she heard of Jesus. She heard of Jesus. She said, you know, I don't spend, I gave these doctors all I've got. And apparently she was, a, at one time, was a woman of means. She said, I don't gave the doctors all I've got. But let me go to Jesus. She, she pressed her way in the crowd, touched him, and got healed. Your word, if it lines up with the, God's word, has to produce. It cannot return void. God wants to do some supernatural things in my life. God wants to do some miracles manifest. When we come together into this house, God wants the miracles to, to, to manifest. He wants people to get healed, delivered, and set free. This is more than just a Sunday social. This is more than just a, a, a Sunday get-together club. I believe God wants me to leave this place on fire and begin to just uh, uh, declare the word of God and begin to see miracles in my family, miracles in my neighborhood. He wants me to lay hands on people and see the power of God manifest. No, not just to come here on Sunday mornings and feel good. Oh, did we have a good service today? Yeah, we did have a good service, but how did it benefit you? What did you leave from the service with? Well, so-and-so, you see, brother, so-and-so got healed, so-and-so got healed. Yeah, they did, but how did it benefit you? How did that service benefit you? How did it benefit me? Did it have an impact on my life? Every time he come into the house of God, this word ought to transform my life. This word ought to do something for me. This word ought to show me how to live. I ought to leave this place with a, a new vision, a, a, a place of a, a, a heart of forgiveness if I don't have one. I ought to, I ought to leave with expectancy. I ought to leave it with purpose. Because God has imparted something in me. Everybody say, God did it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing. Lord God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Lord Jesus.